Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2022-23 season. My name is Dan and we are on the Game Week 3 content already. Game Week 2 hasn't even technically finished yet, but who cares? We love FPL content. We love thinking about transfers nice and early. Why not? So we're going to do another tier list today. We're going to rank all of the most popular transfers in of the week. I did this last week. You guys liked it. If you're still liking this series, please do leave a like so I know to continue it and subscribe as well if you like this kind of thing and you want to see more stuff as well. A few bits of feedback from last episode. So you guys wanted me to also do transfers out. So far, I'm just going to do transfers in, but I don't know how to do that. Should I do transfers out in a different video or on the end of this video and just make this a mega long video? I don't know. Maybe that kind of, you know, should be more of a buy, sell, keep avoid thing. Who knows? But anyway, guys, let's get on with it, guys. Let's not do too much of an intro because we already have spoken for far too long. All right, guys, so here is the tier list. You can see in front of you the 20 most popular transfers in of the week so far in order. So, you know, Martinelli is, is the most popular transfer in of the week, all the way down to Mendy, who is the 20th most popular transfer in of the week. And we're going to put them all on this here tier list. Uh, so, yeah, four, uh, five tiers, as always. Must buys, great transfers, optionals, bad transfers, and avoids. I've changed knee jerk this week to bad transfer. Like, I don't, when I say bad transfer, I just mean a suboptimal transfer, a bit of a waste of a transfer. Doesn't mean absolutely avoid. Avoid is avoid, but bad transfer is just like, I don't really see why anyone would do that, but fair enough. You do you, go. You do you, boo. Um, let's start off with Martinelli then, guys. I, I think I'm actually going to put him straight in great transfer. He's been doing really well. Like, the biggest mistake I think I've made pre-season is going for Saka over Martinelli. Uh, yeah, that's, that was just a mistake on my part. Kind of really regretting that one. Martinelli is just seemingly such a good FPL asset, and it said a lot that Martinelli actually stayed on for longer than Saka. Saka got substituted off early in that game week two game against uh, Leicester. So Martinelli looking really good, getting some really good positionings. His uh, expected goals has been good. He's obviously scored um, twice already this season and we think he's going to get a few more chances. Great fixtures coming up. Obviously Bournemouth next in game week three. So a really nice player to have and his price is just going up and up and up. I imagine he'll be at 6.3 uh, million by the end of this game week um, before game week three deadline. So if you are planning on getting Martinelli, maybe worth going on, going in on him a little bit sooner rather than later. We've got Rodrigo next, who I really like as well. I actually think um, if it wasn't for the Chelsea game next, I think I would put Rodrigo higher than Martinelli. I think if you can wait until after the Chelsea game, then maybe Rodrigo would be a really good signing. But he's looking really good. We know Bamford is injured now. So Rodrigo, despite the fact he's listed as a midfielder, is probably going to be playing in much more of a central striker type uh, situation. He's going to be on penalties now as well. And he's already getting a lot of chances to score, far more chances to score than any of his other Leeds teammates. And he's creating chances as well for his teammates. So he's kind of doing it all. He's doing he's looking really good. He's looked at one of the better FPL assets of all players this season, which is quite crazy. And obviously, he's is he like the highest scoring player in FPL at the time of recording? I think he is. So yeah, he's looking good. He genuinely is looking good. And I think since Bamford is now injured, that makes him an even more desirable FPL option. And I would definitely uh, be thinking about going in on him. It's just that Chelsea game, isn't it? De Silva, I like. I think I'm going to put De Silva in. Um, I, he's optional. He's arguably a great transfer. It depends what you're buying De Silva for. Like, De Silva, I would not buy him to start him every game week. I think he's one of those players where if you've got some other players that you're happy to rotate him with, you know, if you've got an Andreas Pereira or a Nico Williams or, or a Nathan Patterson, if you've got those kind of players, you could rotate them with De Silva. But to suggest that De Silva is a player that you should play every single game is probably wrong. I know he scored two goals in two. But you look at the goals, and it, these are not kind of goals that he's going to score every game week. He is a very good player. Don't get me wrong. I think he's good. I think he's going to be fairly nailed on in this Brentford team, or at least as he gets to full fitness levels, he will become nailed on in this Brentford team. But um, I'm just not sure if he's going to get as many points as some of you guys are thinking he is. So, yeah, a good rotation option. I don't know if I'd be totally happy to start with him every week. He's optional, though. Uh, Jesus, uh, he's going to go in must-buy. Uh, like, no cap. Like, if you haven't got Jesus yet... You need to sort it out. I know a lot of people sold Jesus last game week, which was just crazy. But, um, you know, he's proven how well, like how good of an FPL asset it is. We saw in preseason what he could do. Game week one, we saw some really good moments from Jesus. He was unlucky to not get any uh, FPL returns. And then game week two against Leicester, he gets four FPL returns, two goals, two assists. And you look at that game, you watch that game, and he could have got so much more as well. He could have got six or seven returns in that game, which would have just been absolutely crazy. He's got Bournemouth next. Arsenal have just got some good fixtures in general coming up. Um, I just think you absolutely have to have Jesus in your, in your FPL team. Like, he is 
de he has actually a must buy. Like I would, I would move things around. I would take minus fours to get him in if I didn't have him. I think as long as uh, as long as everything else kind of works out quite well. Um, Kulusevski, I'm gonna put in optional. Um, I don't think it's a bad pick. I don't think it's a great pick. Uh, I just um. I don't, I don't know. I just think he's a, he's an okay pick. I think he's you know not, he doesn't excite me too much. But if you guys want to go for him, then uh, go for him. Uh, obviously, Kane and Son will probably get more points, but for 8.1 million, it could be okay. Do worry. I still worry a little bit about uh, a little bit of rotational reduction of minutes from Kulusevski, especially if uh, if Spurs are up in a game. But I guess we'll see about that. De Bruyne, I'm actually going to put in bad transfer, and I know you guys are going to absolutely hate me for that. Um, bad transfer does not equal bad player. Let's just nip that one in the bud. But my kind of issue is, if you are bringing in De Bruyne, who are you selling to bring in De Bruyne? You're probably selling Son or Salah. And both Son or Salah, I think, are going to outscore De Bruyne over the next, you know, well, two game weeks, definitely. Um, you know, uh, Man City play Newcastle next. Not a great team if you're trying to look for attacking returns like they've kept two clean sheets already this season and they were doing really well for clean sheets last season as well so I'm not expecting City to go there and score too many goals and whereas you know you've got your Liverpool you know you've got Salah and, and your Son who I think are going to do much better over the next couple of game weeks so if you are having to sell a Son or a Salah to get De Bruyne then it is just a bad transfer um I can't really think of any other players I would sell to get De Bruyne would you sell Haaland to get De Bruyne probably not uh would you sell uh Kane and use two transfers to get De Bruyne. No, you wouldn't. You probably wouldn't do that in two transfers. It seems like a just a bad transfer in general. If you've already got De Bruyne, fantastic. If you are removing very good players in order to get De Bruyne, then you're probably a little bit misguided there. That's just my opinion, though. As in Chenko, I'm going to put in optional. Um, he's dropped down a little bit. I just worry a little bit about Arsenal's um, defence. The good thing is they have got some good fixtures. But I just do have that slight concern about Arsenal's defence. So I'm going to put him in optional. I don't think he's a must-buy. Um, but I think he, you know, you could go for him. There's certainly much worse options to go for. Tony, I like. I actually really like him. I'm going to put him in great transfer. Below Martinelli and Rodrigo. But I still think he's a very good transfer. Uh, Brentford have got some good fixtures coming up. Obviously, Fulham next uh, could be decent for some goals. Tony is obviously good creatively. You know, he's, you know, one of the primary goal scorers in that Brentford team. I don't know how exactly it's going to work. Um, you know, certainly since Ericsson left the club, it seems like Tony's going to have to be a little bit more of a creative man. But, you know, he's going to score some goals from open play, but he's also going to score penalties as well. He's an absolute penalty machine. So, yeah, great transfer. I think he's a pretty good one. Like, as long as you're not sacrificing a Jesus, then I think he's a good transfer. Um, Rhys James, I think he's okay. I do worry a little bit about James. I'm not, I have James in my fantasy team. I worry about him playing at centre-back because he played most of that game against Spurs in the in the right centre-back position, and I don't want him there. He's so much better at right wing-back. You saw, as soon as he moved to right wing-back, he scored almost immediately after playing in that position. So it really depends where he's going to play. Um, I don't know exactly where he's going to play. Uh, Leeds is the next fixture, so I guess that's a pretty good fixture for, for someone. Ugh, he's, he, he is just optional, isn't he? Um, you could go for him. I don't think you absolutely need him. I still think it would be a good idea to try and figure out how where he's going to play. And I think maybe you can use your transfers a little bit more effectively elsewhere. So, yeah, not fully convinced by James yet. He is, like, pretty decent, but I don't think he's a player I prioritise using the transfer moves on. Carl Walker, uh, he's a low option. I think, he, like, we're getting to a period where... It's getting more and more risky to go for Walker because, uh, you know, we're still thinking that, well, it still seems like Man City are in the market to sign more uh, fullbacks at the club. And as soon as that happens, Walker uh, is going to be, you know, slightly less of a, an FPL option. He's gone up in price already, so he's more difficult to get to, is Walker. Um, yeah, it could be okay. For the short term, but I'm worrying a little bit about the longer term with Walker. Every week you leave it, Walker becomes more risky. So if you're going to get him... It's now. Don't keep waiting. You just need to get on him. Uh, Fabian Scher, I think is... I'm, I'm going to put him in... I don't know whether to put him in a bad transfer or just a straight up avoid. Um, I think uh, I think I'm going to put him in a void. Just straight up avoid. He is a bad transfer, but I think he's just someone you just don't even touch. Just because, he, yes, he got, you know, he's got some good FPL points so far. But Newcastle so far have had fixtures where they have been capable of getting some nice clean sheets in two fairly decent fixtures. But... In the next three games, Newcastle play Man City next. And then in uh, game week five, they play Liverpool. So in the next three, they play Man City and Liverpool. Um, are Newcastle seriously going to be able to keep clean sheets in those two games? 
probably, well, almost certainly not. And, you know, we could even be looking at, um, you know, situations where, you, where a, a Fabian Scherer is on a one-pointer because he's conceding a couple of goals in those games. So, yeah, I really don't think it's a good time to be going for Newcastle defenders in general. It just seems like a, a, a straight-up bad idea. Uh, a lot of people kind of looked at that game week one score and think, oh, he Scherer's going to score like that every game week. That's not going to happen. People are going to be looking at game week two and th think, oh, yeah, another Newcastle's clean sheet. Maybe he's still a good pick. Just look at the fixtures. Looking forward, it's just, it's, it just doesn't look like a good idea for the next three. It, it really doesn't. And um, I still think there's a good chance that Fabian Scher does rotate with Dan Byrne. I still think there's a chance of that happening, but I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see on that one. Cancelo, I think, um, yeah, I think, I guess he's a, I guess he's a great transfer. I think he's a pretty decent transfer. I mean, if I didn't have Cancelo, I would be pretty worried right now about not having him. So, um, yeah, I'm actually going to put him above Tony. I think, yeah, I think I think Cancelo is a really good transfer. Haaland, I, guess, I think he's optional at this point. I, I don't really know who would be transferring in Haaland at this point. I guess the only person who would be going for Haaland right now is making the Kane to Haaland switch, which I don't think I would do in game week three. I think the next two fixtures for Spurs are actually slightly better than Man City's next two fixtures. So, if you already got Kane, I would probably... I would probably want to keep Kane. Um, I don't think it's worth a transfer necessarily. But then again, if you think Haaland is just a, a much better player in a much better team and you think that he's going to score more goals, even in the slightly more difficult fixtures, then, I mean, he's certainly not a bad transfer. Uh, but I don't know if he's an amazing transfer. Like, he's an amazing player, but is he an amazing transfer? And I think that's the question. I think he's optional. If you really still fancy Holland, you still really like the look of Holland, then go for him. Um, but I would just be a little bit hesitant. If I was a Kane owner right now, I mean, I am a Kane owner right now, would I make the switch to Holland? Personally, I'm not even thinking about it, but I guess it's an option if you really do like him. Pascal Gross has gone up in my estimation. Um, I, I'm, I'm liking him more and more. So much so, I'm actually going to put him in, like, mid-tier optional. Um, I think he could move even higher after after this next game against West Ham. Because after this West Ham game, uh, Brighton have some really nice fixtures, to be fair. But Pascal Gross is playing in a really advanced position. He's actually getting a decent amount of shooting opportunities that I didn't think um, he would get prior to the start of this season. So he's been playing in an advanced position. We also think that Neil Morpé is going to be leaving the club, which means Pascal Gross is going to be on penalties. He's going to be on all sorts of other set pieces as well. So if he's on all set pieces, penalties, playing in an advanced position, and the fixture swing is looking really good from sort of game week four onwards... Then suddenly, Pascal Gross actually could be a decent pick for 5.6 million. So actually, I'm, I'm, he's really warming on me. He's really warming on me. Um, maybe I, you know, last week I said maybe he's an avoid. I think I'm, I'm, I may have to take the L on with that one. I think maybe I was wrong. Even though he blanked in game week two, I still like the look of him again. So yeah, looks good. Uh, Kieran Trippier, I'm going to put him in the same situation as Fabian Scher uh, and avoid. Like, just don't spend 5 million on a defender who's plays Man City and Liverpool in the next three game weeks. It's kind of crazy. Um, Kukurea, uh, is he optional? I guess he's optional. I, I, I think if you're going to go for Kukurea, I think he's an okay short-term move. But, man, you know, like Chelsea are still in the market for so many more defenders. It just seems like this is going to go pretty poorly, um, to be honest. I... I, I it's a short, good short-term pick, but after that, it, it's just one of those transfers uh, that you can make that I think could go downhill. It's a transfer out waiting to happen. If you bring him in, just be aware that you're probably going to want to uh, take him out at some point. But five million for a, for a Chelsea wing back is certainly um, not a bad uh, deal, really at all. But if more defenders sign, if Chilwell, re you know, returns to full fitness, which is going to happen soon, then uh, Kukre is, is is suddenly going to look a lot worse. But uh, yeah, for now, good. A little bit too short term for my liking. Uh, Phil Foden. Um, I don't really know why people would go for Phil Foden. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put him in a bad transfer. Uh, who's it, who are you even selling for Foden? Uh, who are you selling for Foden? That's what I want to know. I don't think he's nailed on. We saw him kind of get you know yanked off. Like I, I don't, I don't know what about this transfer at all. And he's playing against Newcastle next. And like I say, Newcastle are not a bad defense. This is not a team that uh, Man City are going to go beat four or five nil, are they? They're kind of you know one nil, two nil, two one. 3-0, 3-1, maybe tops. After that, probably not. And you're kind of depending, one, on Foden starting and then on Foden uh, getting the goal return. So, yeah, did very well in the in the first half of, of last game week. Is that going to na just naturally continue even in a game like Newcastle? I'm not so sure. So, yeah, we, we've seen a lot of um, Man City players in the bad transfers and uh, Newcastle players in the avoids. Uh, that's mostly just because they play each other this week. So, I think there's, you know, good times and bad times to buy good players. Like, just because... 
De Bruyne, Foden, Cher, Trippier are in the bad transfers and the voids. That doesn't mean they're bad players. It doesn't mean they're bad picks. It just means that this game week is not necessarily the week to go for them. Maybe wait one week, two weeks or something like that. Ben Mee is an absolute knee-jerk transfer. Don't get me wrong. People are only buying him because he scored, what was it, 14 or 15 points last game week uh, with his goal against Manchester United, expecting that to happen every week. It's not going to happen every game week and it is a massive knee-jerk transfer, people buying in Ben Mee. But... Brentford actually do have some really nice fixtures, and for 4.5 million, even if you're just looking for clean sheets, and you know that's a, there's a good chance that that's all you will get because you know uh, your centre backs don't score every game week. Uh, but even with just clean sheets, I think they are on the way. And 4.5 million, I think you can do a lot worse. So not a bad transfer at all. Nico Williams, um, I don't know if I like him as a transfer necessarily, but I thought he was fantastic in game week two on all set pieces, taking loads of shots on um, for 4 million, like. It was actually quite mad. I think he's a really, really good pick. Uh, a really good pick. Um, got a good fixture against Everton next game week. You could arguably play him if you were to, if you have like a 4.5 or a 5 million defender, and you want to downgrade them in order to free up some budget. Then Nico Williams could be a really nice player to go for. So was really impressed with him in game week two. I think it's, you know, I think there are points on the cards, but I, I am a little. The only the concern is I wouldn't count on Nottingham Forest clean sheets too much they were very very lucky to keep a clean sheet um in in that game uh, so uh, yeah that's the that's the one concern don't expect clean sheets necessarily and then finally mendy like why are people buying mendy i don't really understand why is he one of the most popular transfers in he didn't even you didn't even get any good fpl points last week doesn't make any sense i guess he's like just a bad transfer like i don't even know why someone would do that if you need a new goalkeeper this game week i'll probably go for raya at brentford uh, you know makes a lot of saves which is always good and he also um has great fixtures as we kind of mentioned that for the the Brenton for fixtures that are looking good. So, yeah, maybe going for Raya if you really are desperate for a new goalkeeper. But, uh, no, Mendy, Chelsea, have, have, have Chelsea convinced anyone defensively so far? Probably not for me. Uh, they, look, they, look, they, they look good, at, you know, for a lot of the last game. But, I don't know, I still think... I'm not I'm not totally convinced by that one. Uh, but, yeah, there, there we go, guys. That's, that's pretty much the tier list. I think that's looking... Pretty smart, actually. Yeah, Jesus the only must buy. And we've got some bad transfers at the bottom there. And aside from that, there's a lot of players that are being kind of heavily brought in that are, you know, just look like decent options. Yeah, why not? Lots of players that are looking good. Uh, but yeah, Jesus, if I didn't have him, would certainly be the, the top of my priority list. Uh, Martinelli, Rodrigo, Cancelo and Tony, also very, very good transfers. There's loads of optional players in there as well that you could potentially go for. But I think most people are probably going to be focusing on the midfield positions this week with some disappointing um, returns for some of our, our more popular, um, I guess, FPL midfielders. So yeah, uh, there we go. There's your tier, tier list. Hopefully that was a good one. If you did like it, leave a like and uh, yeah, all that stuff. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you do still like this, um, I will keep doing this series every Monday for the rest of the season, potentially. Maybe we'll try and do some transfers out as well. I just don't know how to do that, whether it's part of this video or a separate video on a different day or on the same day. I don't really know. Um, of course, we do our streams as well on Monday. So we'll have our sub strategy stream that will be going live at 10 p.m. UK time. So directly after the Liverpool versus Crystal Palace match, we are going to go live with a strategy stream and just talk about, you know, future planning with FPL. So hopefully some of you guys will be available to join me for that. Um, Fantasy Football Hub, still got 50% off. If you want to go check that out, link in the description. Um, that 50% off is not going to last much longer. I think it's only the rest of this week. And then, it, you know, then you have to pay full price, which is no good. So, yeah, uh, Go check that out if you want, but that's pretty much it from me today. Thank you so much for watching, guys, once again, and I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.